This travel day started like a lot of them do. A great breakfast, a cup of coffee, good conversation with your friends that you're leaving, and maybe even the friends you're traveling with. I think one of the realizations you have to have as an RVer, and absolutely certainly as a full-time RVer, that sooner or later you're going to take your turn in the barrel and you're going to have some problems. And today's video is about the problems Pat and Paul had. But when you see this video where they hug here, and this happens right before they get in their rig, unbeknownst to them that they're going to have a 12-hour travel day today struggling to get to their next destination. It's a togetherness and working as a team and hooked to the same side of the wagon as you're pulling along that makes the process so much easier to do. It turns out that we traveled about one hour before we actually started to have problems with Paul's cooling system. And when I looked at the map later, it was almost all an incline, but it was never more than about 3%. So it's like nothing that we've experienced in the past. But I can tell you that when you're driving behind somebody that you're caravanning with, and remember, this is just our little private caravan now, we're done with the Adventure Caravans one, and you come around a corner and you see your friend by the side, it is uh, probably about 75% as traumatic as if it was happening to you. So coming up on the right, you'll see Paul, and it's right at the top of this incline. I'm going 50 miles an hour like I'm supposed to. And as you come around this curve and you're looking at different things as you're guiding your motorhome through here, you kind of discover this maybe late enough to be able to judge, do I really have enough room to put 65 feet of motorhome there? Yeah. Okay, give them a call. Don't don't use the radio. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, uh, said to stop the engine, so we're going to check and see if the fan valve went. Oh, okay. All right. So if you find the pull up up there, just go ahead. Okay, we'll let you know then. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Bye bye. All right, we just pulled over because we passed Pat and Paul on the side and we just called them and they broke a fan belt. Right, now I'm going to pretend to help Paul because if my fan belt broke, Paul would replace my fan belt for me. Mm -hmm. He's that type of guy. So I'm going to give him support if he needs a back rub or something. But this is a reason why you carry spare fan belts. Oh, my gosh. You carry spare fuel filters. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, water separator filters and things that you can get at and that are a little bit hard to get in the middle of an Arizona. Yeah, not much outside. out here. All right. All right. So Mark's all unhooked. He's going to go back there and see what he can do to help. And I'll just uh, hang out here with the rig. Literally, by the time I had gotten in my Honda and got back here to try to help Paul, Paul had started to take the belts off. And I just want to show you, we do have both belts on now. I didn't want to videotape it because we had enough uh, excitement doing it. But it was the better part of a one hour job. The most difficult thing was trying to remember how the belt went on. Because remember when the belt breaks and comes off, it erases all evidence on how it goes together. So uh, I have a diagram of mine. I could not find it to help Paul and literally remembered where it is right when the job was done. And that is, I have the diagram in the same bag that the belt is in, which is in my underwear drawer to keep it cool and not baking in my bays here and degrading. This is the level of tools 
that you need to do something like that. And if you're not ready for it, uh, maybe you're just better off calling CoachNet. So hopefully we're gonna be wrapping things up here and I'll turn the camera off so that Paul and I still remains friends. So they got the uh, fan belt fixed. Now we're getting some antifreeze out. I guess they need some of that. But uh, this is one of the things that's nice traveling with others that we do help each other out. We just got a, a message from Pat that their temperature is all over the place. So we're going to, uh, they just pulled over, we pulled over, we're going to see what's going on. I don't know what it is, but uh, looks like there's something leaking. Also, they did say they were kind of low on antifreeze, so the temperature may be all over because we need to add some more. <laughs> Okay, so just like any of you guys out there, uh, we're pontificating and talking about how the coach was filled, what level the coach was sitting at when we were putting in the antifreeze, did it take a full load of antifreeze, uh, was it still low with coolant, who the heck knows, these things are really complicated. Now I can tell you when I looked in there, one thing I noticed was that there was water coming out at the connection of some big uh, inlet to the DPF filter. I don't know what the heck uh, that's supposed to be doing there, but I certainly know water shouldn't be coming out of it. Take a little listen here how surprised we were of the next thing that happened to the engine. Now it's at this point that the Chan man would have officially given up because obviously the electronics is taking over and protecting the engine. But I'm telling you that Pat and Paul retired as successful farmers because they didn't take no for an answer many times and they know their way around machinery. So they're going to forge ahead and try to limp this thing along because I'm sure that they're convinced that there's just a giant slug of air in the cooling system and it still just needs to be filled properly. All right. It's kind of funny here that we're having a conversation about the different colors of antifreeze because ultimately Pat and Paul were desperate enough. They could, you know, care less. They had to put any color in there because they wanted a mixture of that to raise the boiling temperature as well as the water they were adding. Little did I know that in five weeks I was going to be in a situation on a failure that I had where I needed the correct color of antifreeze and unbeknownst to me and as unbelievable as it sounds uh, Gaffney Freightliner had set me up for failure by putting an oddball brand in and an oddball color that I was only able to get if I would buy 55 gallon drums of it so all of a sudden now I was left with some tough decisions to make. So I want anybody to reply in the comments if they can figure out where Paul got this. Oh my god. Marco! We've got drama going on. You're Fifi, huh? Do you have a cover? So unbeknownst to me, the drama was all of a sudden we couldn't find the radiator cap. And it was one of those little games where you had to look and look and look and look and when you couldn't find it you had to stop looking at the same places you were looking at and you had to start looking in places that looked improbable for it to be and lo and behold there it was sitting down inside all right that's done let's see what we can do now All right, I think we're ready to try again. Here we go. As you can see, it's starting to rain. And Paul pulled forward a little bit just to uh, 
see if we see any leaking again like we saw a little trail behind them looks good well as it turned out it wasn't good and Pat and Paul continued to have to limp along. Uh, right after this stop, they were right down the road from Winslow, Arizona, and they pulled in and bought more antifreeze and basically sent us on along our way to the campground and told us that they would limp in as soon as they could. Now, we had set out on this travel day at about 10 o'clock in the morning. And by the sun setting in the distance, you can see how much time we have spent trying to limp Paul's motor coach along. So when we finally did get to Gallup, we thought we'd better take advantage in a big city to get some fuel. And as it turned out that this was one of those happy times where we saved the most per gallon off the pump price than we did in a long time. And you can see here, it was 80 cents a gallon using the TSD logistics card that we've been using probably for the better part of almost four years now. Here's a quick one and a half minute discussion of what the Open Roads TSD logistics card is all about. If you go to ourjourneyinmiles.com, and click on the resources tabs and then scroll down to TSD Logistics, you'll find a blog that we created a while ago that describes in more detail on how the TSD program works. There'll be our previous video, which has a lot of good current information in it, a explanation of how the original EFS app worked on your phone and in fact still works but it's really not recommended because it's not as tailor-made as the current app that uh, Open Roads has and that's one here with this uh, dark color so this is the spreadsheet that Sue and I will send you if you send me an email to our journey in miles at gmail.com. Miles is spelled M-Y-L-E-S. The TSD Logistics program is very generous. They give us, as RVers, 90% of the savings that they have negotiated with the trucking places that uh, they uh, use for their trucking business. It's in the back of a hotel. Okay. So now imagine you're Pat and Paul at 10 o'clock at night pulling into this long driveway and you see the arrow. Well, that's where I was standing with a flashlight blinking to them. That's what being in a caravan, either a professional one or with your buddies, is all about. Helping each other. Hopefully we got a pull through, that'd be nice. But I don't know. Find out. So now it was time to go inside and see what kind of spots they had saved for Pat and Paul and us for overnight. All right, that was the longest, 222 miles. Now, when we saw the spots that we were assigned, we were really happy for Pat and Paul because at this time, they still were thinking that they were gonna have their rig towed in. And it looked like it was gonna be about thirty-two dollars to $3,500 to have that done, to have it taken from Gallup here to Albuquerque. But you can see that when we get to this spot here, it would have been a perfect place to have that done. And it could have came uh, right to the site and picked the rig up. The thing that complicated it is that we had a train ride booked in two days that Pat and Paul were really looking forward to going on. And so they decided to leave their rig for a few days at this campground and then come back and get it towed when they had time. Here's a little video that Sue took 
and sent to Pat and Paul so that they could have confidence that they had a great spot to get the rig towed from in a few days. So this is your site and you can see it's a pull through lots of room in front of you so that tow truck can easily get right in front of you and get you out. This bouncing icon here on the lower left you can see is the Sedona, Arizona campground that we were in. And it was during this leg of the trip here probably about where my cursor is right before Winslow where the overheating issue started and <clears throat> Pat and Paul after the fan belt was fixed tried to work through this area here but it was just not getting better we had thought that there was air trapped in the system and the cooling system would eventually get back to normal in fact right around Winslow here is when they sent us on our merry way to go to the campground in USA RV Park Gallup and to see how things would be there on a scouting mission and thought maybe that they would catch up with us. Well, it turns out late in the night, they went through this area here. And as it got later in the day, they had less and less problems. And they rolled in <clears throat> somewhere in the neighborhood of nine o'clock at night. Now, because Pat and Paul, but mostly Paul, were jonesing to take this leg here and to eventually get up to uh, Shama, which is where the, uh, the Compress and Toltec train is that he just was uh, really excited to go on, they literally had to come up with a plan to be able to do it. So what they did is they left in Gallup, they left their RV parked and they were gonna have it towed out. And that was like one of the reasons why we were so happy that we had that campground uh, site that was so large so that a truck could come in and just take it. And what they did was they stayed behind in the morning. We took off early and they packed up their rig and they you know, made sure it was uh, gonna be okay while it was over the weekend because they were gonna be gone about three days to enjoy this train with us and then they were gonna come back. Well, then we went on to this campground here in Shama, and we all experienced a train together, and we'll have an episode on that. But then the very day that we left, Pat and Paul had to come back to their rig here and pick it up. And the original plan was that it was going to be towed. But over the uh, weekend, Paul decided he was going to give it one more whack to try to drive it. And what he was going to do is he was going to be driving this route here from Gallup and he was going to meet us in uh, where the balloon fiesta is, fiesta is in Albuquerque. There's a Cummins dealership that he ultimately ended up having his rig fixed at. We just continued on with our trip and we came down to Santa Fe and we spent some time there. And by the time we eventually got to our same camp uh, site in Albuquerque, and we stayed at the Enchanted Trails RV Park, which we've stayed at the last time we were in Albuquerque for the Balloon Fiesta, and we really liked it. Well, now that you know how plans changed and how flexible we all had to be, let's get back to the conclusion of this episode. Well, we're not broke down right now, we actually stopped in this wide open area. We're in New Mexico. We're on our way to Ch Sharma or Shama. Shama. But we stopped so that the driver could have a restroom break. And unfortunately, our travel partners, Pat and Paul, they are broke down and they just left their rig in the last campground we were in and they're gonna have it towed, I believe, somewhere. But that brings up our adventure caravans. Uh, we have not taken our tags off yet. They come off relatively easy. And it just shows the uh, security that we had because we did have some people that had some issues and some breakdowns. And our tail gunner uh, helped them take care of everything. And it was kind of startling because now uh, Pat, Paul, uh, Sue and I, we are on our own 
to come up with our own plan here. So uh, once again, we were reminded about the peace of mind we had and now we're on our own and the peace of mind is... I like having a tail gunner yeah. on these two, way, two lane highways yeah. through no man's land. Yeah. I mean, you hardly see any cities. I like that security. Where's my tail gunners? <laughs> All right, let's get going, honey. <laughs> 